The cycle has fundamentally changed. We've now got buyers in the game that are never, ever going to let go of their Bitcoin. The hodl rate's about to go up. There is no real institutional alternative uh, to Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, we're sitting, we're sitting pretty right now. How are you doing, man? And now I alluded to a post you made earlier, and you know it sounded shocking. And the the post was 69k Bitcoin is nothing. In fact, you shouldn't even get excited about that. And you you laid out some pretty strong reasoning. You're the first person I've seen talk about this from a unique UK perspective, at least. Uh, British Hoddle. Why is 69K nothing to even be excited about? Yeah, I mean, look, everyone's really excited about the price action right now, but I, 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 feel like, uh, I, I feel like I should be on CNN because it feels like they stole something from me in 2021 and now they're giving it back to me and I should be happy about it, right? I feel like I should be a, a talking head on CNN, not on Discover Crypto, because that's the mindset that, that everyone seems to be adopting with this. The truth is, is that... 69K is just the beginning. Firstly, inflation has already screwed your 69K. It's actually 79,000. 13.8% of cumulative inflation <laughs> since 2021. Anyone celebrating 69K that's in the know, I understand mainstream will be celebrating it as an all-time high, but 79,000 is the true all-time high if you factor in the inflation that they told you about. I would agree. And, uh, you know, it's just a good point, the purchasing power. And this is something I was talking about in 2021, and I felt like it was falling on deaf ears. I said, Folks, 69K in November feels less important than the 63, 64K in April, I believe, because ask yourself, this was rampant inflation in 2021. Can you buy more eggs with that one Bitcoin? Can you buy more pounds of steel? And I felt like the answer was no. And I mean, inflation hasn't cooled down now. What does it feel like in the UK? I mean, are people, I know in Canada, they're really feeling the, the, the crunch of inflation. I feel like in America, we're real feeling it as well. But our authorities just lie to us so much about what inflation is, telling us not to believe our eyes, not to believe our ears. Is it a similar situation in Europe and UK? Yeah, I think it actually potentially it's worse because we're more polite than you guys, right? So we just sort of accept it. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, keep your stiff upper than... lip and just, you know, soldier right. on, huh? That's right. Except, you know, the reality is, is that they're stealing your wealth. They're stealing your ability to protect your future and the protect the future of your children. Uh, and, and, and they're doing that, you know, continuously by telling you that the inflation rate is dropping. And of course, as the inflation rate drops, that doesn't mean prices come down. It means that prices go up slower. But most people don't understand that. So they read the headlines, they see the headlines, and they feel happy about what's going on. It's a, you know, it, it's a very weird world. And that's what's special about the Bitcoin space. And what I love about being in the Bitcoin space is that People are, are smart. People are intelligent. They understand what's going on and they want to they want to protect themselves from from what's going on. And I, I like being around people like that. Absolutely. And, you know, you've been putting out some really great content lately on your channel uh, regarding the ETFs. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, we're seeing this almost like not even a resurgence, a, a huge amount of capital flow into these ETFs. I think more than some people expected. But do you, do you expect that we're going to continue continue seeing this, uh, you know, record breaking each day of this volume. Are we going to have a second resurgence when the RIA start coming online? And with all this, do you think this is fuel coupled with the inflation for a potential super cycle where we somewhat outperform on a percentage basis uh, the, the, previous, uh, the previous cycle that we had? Well, I'll start by answering your last question first. I've never really been a fan of the diminishing returns model. Um, I think it's hard to have diminishing returns when you've got an unlimited amount of fiat money chasing an absolute finality of scarcity asset. So I've never really been a fan of that. Secondly, BlackRock is a $10 trillion asset manager and a 1% allocation would be $100 billion. And they could put in $200 million every single day, no matter what happened. And it would take them 495 days, 495 trading sessions, which, by the way, is two years uh, um, to actually get a 1% allocation at current AUM levels. Right. So the, do I think this continues? Yes, I think it continues. I think it fluctuates up and down. But I think overall it continues for a very long time. The cycle has fundamentally changed. I think we spoke about six weeks ago when the ETF was approved. The cycle has fundamentally changed. We've now got buyers in the game that are never, ever going to let go of their Bitcoin. The hodl rate's about to go up. There is no real institutional alternative uh, to Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, we're sitting, we're sitting pretty right now with with how this cycle is going and i think it gets really exciting once we cross 69 which is the retail all-time high and then 100 and i and then, and then at that point i don't know what happens
So, you know, the idea of diminishing returns, it does beg to question one thing. Now that this is the cycle of institutions entering, you know, we've had four cycles with retail. Now institutions are involved. Does this change the dynamic of this idea of blow off tops? Are we going to have essentially, especially over this next 18 months, consistent buying power preventing those 40 or 50 percent drops on the way up? Yeah. And, you know, the other side of it is, is that you've got the options market that's probably going to be approved in April. It may take a 242 days, but it probably will be approved in April. And when that comes in, you've now got options market makers that have to hedge their positions by holding the underlying spot as well. So there is a lot of buying on the underlying spot side here, regardless of which way you think the price is going to go. And that ultimately is used to, to dampen the volatility in the asset as the market capitalization goes up. So yes, I, I do think that markets uh, are going to get a lot more stable. I do think that you're probably not going to see those 85, 90% drawdowns. And I think we're entering more of what's called what I would like to call a perpetual Bitcoin cycle where, you know, it's like a normal ish cycle with normal booms and normal troughs over a period of, you know, uh, a year and a half, two years. So you have maybe 2.5 of them within every cycle. And then every four years you get the adrenaline shot with the halving. All right. Well, uh, I'm about to give you an adrenaline shot after a fake question. We have a, a fan in the chat loves Pokemon. I might be the first person on camera to ever ask you this question. British Hoddle, <laughs> who is your favorite Pokemon? Listen, only on a crypto channel could you uh, could, could I get this question. Uh, there, there's no Bitcoin only channel that would ask me this question. It's well, got to be it Pikachu. Wrong. They're doing it wrong then. It's got to be Pikachu, right? Like, I don't know. Listen, Pikachu is the only Pokemon that I know. So it's got to be Pikachu. <laughs> You know what? You don't even know that much Pokemon, but you still got really excited. I thought you were talking about Bitcoin. You got so excited. But speaking of Bitcoins, you say, you know, the markets will become more stable. And I think of an ironic turn of phrase. Is it the markets will make, might make it more unstable? And when I say markets, I mean the exchanges. I don't know if you've seen the, the mysterious entity called Mr. 100. You know, there's a lot of speculation on who this whale is. He keeps buying 100 Bitcoin at a time, 101 point something. I've seen some yeah. speculation it could be Upbit or other South Korean whale. I feel like these exchanges have to start accumulating Bitcoin now. You know, they're all slowly siphoning from Binance's coffers there. So Binance, Crypto.com, Coinbase, PayPal, Upbit, all, all these exchanges are going to need enough Bitcoin for retail over the next 15, 18 months. Will there be a point where there's a supply shock where exchanges are fighting each other for the remaining marketable uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin for sale? Yes, but I don't think it happens in the way that retail expects it to happen. I think the retail uh, viewer sort of expects like one day suddenly all of the Bitcoin supply just disappears and now everyone starts running around like a headless chicken. You know, this this isn't FTX, right? You're talking about <laughs> you're talking about solid market makers who understand the, the who understand will have algorithms, will have analysis to look at the speed at, uh, at which their Bitcoin supply is declining and to plan around that. And therefore you and by the way, supply doesn't go away. Supply just needs the right price. So in essence, the price will start moving around until the supply becomes available. All right. So the price goes up. The whales wake up. Justin's son's like, I'll sell some. And so eventually, as that price goes up, it'll, more Bitcoin will hit the market. And so uh, do, do you think we'll get any kind of supply shock narrative? Because there was a little bit of that in 2021. Yeah, I think there's always going to be some supply shock narrative every now and then because narratives are good to sell, right? Nar narratives are really good for to, to drive clicks and to sell. So, yes, I think there will be supply shock narratives. But you got to remember, we're dealing with the best market makers in the world. This is the most successful ETF product launch in the history of American capital markets. It is Bitcoin and, and, and it's here to stay, which means that every asset manager, every market maker in the world is now paying attention and building their models to, to allow them to service this market as and when needed. So British HODL, you uh, clearly have a lot of focus on Bitcoin as I think a lot of institutions and big money does around the world. But if I had to, if you had to hold only three tokens through this bull cycle, Bitcoin, what would the other two tokens be? I'd probably hold uh, USDT, as the other I knew token, I was going to say that, uh, and that's about it, right? I, I think I think the best portfolio would be Bitcoin and cash. 
right? And that, again, that's because my focus is on fixing the number one problem humanity has, which is 230 years of financial subjugation that Bitcoin finally fixes. I don't think it's worth a single second of my time to focus on any of this other hyperbolic potential BS that everyone thinks they're going to fix. I just don't think it's worth it. But if everyone wants to, if people want to spend their time thinking about that because they've got nothing else to do, no other value to create, no other, no other dreams that they want to create in the real world, so they've got to do it on the crypto space, I wish them all the best. All right, so you're not going to allocate into ETH, Solana, Doge, anything like that. But what about Bitcoin mining stocks or micro strategy? Could you ever find any kind of justification after a dip, say Bitcoin corrects 20%, and a mining stock corrected 50%. I mean, are there any companies like that on your radar? Yeah. So I, I in the last cycle, I made a lot of money on uh, mining stocks as well as micro strategy. This time around, I'm reevaluating my choices because you've got the ETFs now. The ETFs are causing a sucking out of returns from all of these other uh, all of these other peripheries, right? These tier one, twos, and threes when it comes to Bitcoin. So as far as, as far as that goes, I'm waiting to see. I do hold a small amount of mining stock positions at this point. Um, micro strategy is absolutely a potential trade. I, I, I put out an analysis of micro strategy. I think I was half right and half wrong. I said there was probably a 40% uh, premium to micro strategy, and then it proceeded to dump 39% as soon as I said that. But looking at the trade, going forward if i saw that there was a discount to its bitcoin position i'd probably place a long call option uh what are your thoughts on michael saylor i think he's a genius i think michael saylor is extremely smart he's a pioneer he's going to be the one of one in this bitcoin space that managed to get pivot his company into basically a, a de facto bitcoin commodities etf right uh and if they uh, allow him and and micro strategy rather into the s p 500 i don't know any other time where a, a commodities etf has been allowed into the s p 500 which is basically what micro strategy is to me yeah i was actually thinking okay. the same thing it's like do you even sell enterprise software anymore like what what are your actual sales he seems like just pivoting full-blown commodity play but i don't think there's anything wrong with that at least this point in the cycle uh you know 15 months from now, 18 months from now, you know, maybe that stock looks a little overbought, but uh, it's looking good right now. Now, British HODL, got a lot of people uh, in this chat saying, are you Mr. 100? Can you confirm or deny, uh, are you Mr. 100? I'm not. And even if I was, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> very, very smart. I think uh, that's some of the good advice Richard Hart gives is uh, never tell anyone about your crypto. And that kind of brings me to my next point. I wasn't even going to ask you this, but do you have any kind of strategy to converse with the no coiners in your circle you know you might have a cousin a brother a, a family member you've been telling a crypto hey buy this coin you got to get it you got to get in on bitcoin i'm trying to tell you at five thousand i'm trying to tell you at ten thousand is there any strategy when you start having tons and tons of profits do you say anything do you say nothing do you you know try to use it as an example next time i tell you to buy you should buy you keep mum what's the word here yeah, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's a tough situation. I think depending on the net worth of the person, I think it'd be worth having a conversation. And everyone else, you just gotta you just gotta let them come to you. So definitely, the people who are at, you know above a million dollars, maybe one to five million dollars, I will be hounding them from now on. Um, anyone below that, I've said this publicly as well. Like once we get past a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, let's just go through quickly what it takes to buy a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, right? You probably need about three hundred thousand dollars of cash liquidity people with there's people with two three million dollar net worth that don't have three hundred thousand dollars lying around in the bank right because it's all in property it's all in different assets so really we're looking at the one to five million dollar range to get to one bitcoin that's my mission for everyone else who's who's going to discover bitcoin and not be able to get uh, to to your one Bitcoin, there's amazing pieces of content out there. And of course, my content's out there too. But my focus is really getting people to one Bitcoin because I think that's where the inflection point lies. Oh, yeah. I was going to say 60 million millionaires in the world. Three millionaires for every one Bitcoin. You know, I've also heard, imagine if uh, 100 billionaires all decide to just put in one billion. Will we get the rat race? You know, I asked about the rat race from the exchanges we get the rat race from the millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, I think we have to at some point, right? I, I think there has to be a point where millionaires and billionaires realize that, okay, I need to get some, uh, get some Bitcoin, right? And, and at that point, we get the rush the same way. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin is it's the same asset. Whether you are uh, unemployed, 
living on the street, got a good job, a millionaire, a multimillionaire or a billionaire is the exact same asset with the same cost profile. All right. Well, uh, British Hotel, we already take 15 minutes every time. We appreciate you stopping by. It's always a great time. And every time I talk to you, I just want to shut up, buy Bitcoin and become fabulously wealthy. Not to steal your catchphrase there, but British Hotel, always a great time. Pikachu, the chat loved Pikachu uh, choice almost more than Bitcoin. And chat, you got to love Bitcoin more than a Pokemon. All right. This, what, what channel are you watching here, folks? Uh, but British Hotel, it's always a great time talking to you, man. Listen, my, ple my pleasure, fellas. Have a good day and uh, buy Bitcoin.